So uh, Stephen Haywood patients that everything's always a little bit impro you know, improvised here. Um, we try to give the image like we have it all together. Um, <clears throat> so the Stephen Haywood Patients Today Award is always one of these really hard ones for us to figure out uh, who to honor at TDI. And it's very rare, uh, honestly, that we give two of the same award each year. We try to really force ourselves to pick one um, one person uh, that epitomizes the values of these types of awards. This year we actually have uh, two awards and uh, they are equally remarkable men um, that have really taught us at TDI uh, the values that, that Stephen taught us early on and inspired us to create our institution. The, uh, <clears throat> you know, this is, a, this is an award, you can see a few of the names up here underneath, uh, underneath Rob's. Uh, it is typically given to a person living with a disease, just like Stephen was, but more importantly, it's given to a person that uh, comes to TDI in some way and shows up and says, make me believe. Tell me what you're doing. And they say it every day, and they never go away, and they're involved in everything that we do from our online forum to our, our webinars and really coming and see us in the labs. And what we get out of it at TDI is a direct connection to the patient community, a direct tap to what people living with ALS today want to hear and how best we can communicate with them as communication technologies are always changing. This uh, first award winner, Rob Tyson, uh, also known as Persevering Through the Forums, um, really epitomized that. He used the internet to connect with hundreds, if not thousands of people worldwide living this disease and said, we don't actually have to go to the meetings. We don't actually have to go anywhere. We can use the power of internet to organize together a single force and drive forward research in unique ways. Through the ALS forum that ALS TDI hosts to patients like me, to doing um, advocacy down on Capitol Hill, advocacy at the ALS Association's annual meeting, advocacy with a number of other ALS organizations and driving forward one, with one voice, Rob Tyson really epitomized, I think, a lot of what Stephen did. So this first award uh, is being given posthumously because we lost Rob uh, to ALS pretty recently. Uh, his family wanted to be here to accept this award um, on his behalf, but, but they're still grieving and they asked that Wendy read the letter uh, on, on their behalf. So I'm going to hand it over to Wendy now to uh, read a letter from, I believe, Rob's wife, Kelly. Uh, all right. um, well, I'm, I'm very sad to present this posthumously to Rob. He passed away on September 10th. And he was an incredible advocate. He made several appearances before Congress and the CDC. And his Rob story, like so many of the ALS stories, is powerful. And it's one, I'm sorry, I just realized I hit the computer. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's one that needs to be heard by our governing bodies, by healthcare, research, technology. This is all key to an ALS patient's survival, and Rob wholeheartedly took up the role as advocate. Um, I spoke a little with Rob's wife, Kelly, and we both thought it would be nice to hear what Rob wrote, um, what he presented before the members of Congress during the ALS Advocacy Day in Washington. This is uh, posted on his Facebook site, so some of you might have already seen it. My ALS story. I am Rob Tyson from Arden, North Carolina, near Asheville, and I am a person living with ALS. I can no longer talk clearly and so have to use a computer to speak. I am a son, brother, husband, and father of a 15-year-old boy and 12-year-old girl. I worked most of my career as a mechanical engineer. I have always been very athletic and always enjoyed the outdoors. In fact, I spent many years as a semi-professional road bicycle by cyclist while working as a full-time engineer. I have also run multiple marathons and endurance trail runs. Other hobbies included whitewater kayaking, backpacking, hiking, and mountain biking. My life changed at the age of 39 on March 8, 2010, when I was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. ALS is a particularly cruel disease that destroys a person's ability to control all voluntary muscle movement, often rapidly. 
As the disease progresses, I may become trapped inside my body, completely unable to walk, move my arms, breathe, or even blink an eye. There is no effective treatment for ALS, no known cause, and no cure, yet the lifetime risk for everyone is about 1 in 500. The disease does not discriminate in who it strikes and can affect anyone at any time, regardless of age, gender, race, or ethnicity. Military veterans are approximately twice as likely to die from ALS as those who have not served in the military, and it is now recognized as a service-related disease. <clears throat> ALS is always fatal in an average of three years following diagnosis. This disease quickly robbed me of my ability to speak. My hands were next and are very weak to the point where I can no longer do simple tasks like opening Ziploc bags and lids on jars and bottles. Zipping my fly, doing buttons on shirts, or tying my shoes is completely unachievable. I type with one able pinky finger. I can no longer walk even a few steps without support. My breathing is weakening too. Needless to say, I am no longer able to run, bicycle, kayak, and backpack. I was not even self-sufficient in slightly more than one year since diagnosis. I am now 100% reliant on others. My mental acuity is better than ever, so I am keenly aware of my condition and progress. I often think of ALS as the polar opposite of Alzheimer's disease. I am not here for myself, as it is likely too late for me. I am resolved to do what I can to ensure continued research and development of effective treatments for ALS to benefit those more recently diagnosed and those in the future. Rob's story is it's one of far too many, and it grieves me to hear ALS patients who always say, it may be too late for me, but hopefully I can help future patients who must deal with ALS. They're brave, selfless, caring people, and they're people that the world needs. And it's quite a privilege to present this award to Rob. And I have <clears throat> Kelly in the family's letter. Words cannot even begin to express how incredibly proud we are that Rob was chosen to receive the 2012 Stephen Haywood Award in conjunction with Peter Frades. There are just two, the, they are just two of the many brave men and women warriors in the fight for a cure for ALS. They were on the same team, and they are both heroes. As Christopher Reeves said, a hero is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. Rob has proven to be everything this ward represents, an advocate for research and awareness while staying focused on current research worldwide. His passion and dedication towards trying to understand this deadly disease was an inspiration to us all. Rob always had a competitive side, but in regards to ALS, he never sought praise or acknowledgement. To him, it was simply a passion. Upon learning of his diagnosis, he accepted the challenge, never asking why. He spent countless hours researching, graphing, and educating others. Many have said Rob was like their ALS concierge, pointing them in the direction of clinical trials and forums, giving them direction and hope. Over the past two years, Rob made three public appearances in Washington, D.C. to meet with Congress, multiple trips to Atlanta, Georgia to participate as a patient advocate for the CDC registry, and he also attended the 2011 NEALS ALS Clinical Research Learning Institute and was named NEALS Research Ambassador. He had many internet posts on sites such as Facebook, Patients Like Me, and NEALS. In May of this year, Rob was also awarded the 2012 Alsa Rasmussen Advocate of the Year Award for his persistent efforts in encouraging others living with ALS to follow his lead by embracing advocacy and public policy as a means to find a treatment and a cure. For those of you who knew Rob as persevering, that's his username, persevering, on the website, Patients Like Me, I am sure you would be disappointed if I did not mention his statistical analysis, persuasive explanations, or detailed graphs. Even in his final days, with only a pinky and an iPad, Rob selflessly strived to educate and inform. 
We are all saddened by the loss of a father, <clears throat> husband, son, brother, and friend, but also the loss of a true warrior in the fight against ALS. We are so proud of the legacy he leaves behind, and his spirit will forever live on through his family, friends, and the ALS community. These words were inspired by the many Facebook posts from Rob's proud twin sister, Cassie, his brother, Lynn, his parents, and many friends and colleagues. Thank you all so much for the love and support you've given to Rob and our family over the past two and a half years. Thank you to all who continue to fight this devastating disease each and every day. May each person whose life was touched by Rob's be energized by his spirit, and may we all continue his advocacy and fight. We wish we could be there with you today to accept this award, but please know that our hearts are there with you today. The Tyson Family.